OK, uh, good evening. So this is uh, week one. A Thursday, not Tuesday. So today. We're going to look into centric buckling analysis. And we're going to go to the next section. OK, after we finish centric buckling analysis into Euler's formula for other end condition. And this this is an important topic. A lot of times students get confused on 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 this topic. OK, so I'm going to spend more time on it. So just to quickly uh, recap. We have so we we. We use the second order homogeneous differential equation. Uh, we started by formulating a free body diagram. OK, just quickly recap. We started formulating our uh, free body diagram. OK, which is. Uh, this OK, we formulate our free body diagram. And then we apply the elastic curve uh, equation. As you can see over here. Then we form an equation. And we got a homogeneous second order differential equation. And then when we solve for it, OK, what we want to find is Y as a function of X. However, for this case, OK, we realize that we cannot determine this uh, value. However, we are able to dictate the condition based on critical load, okay, which is which is more important, right? So if you were to load, if, if let's say uh, I gave you a structure looking like this, just for example, and there's a certain length, and there's a certain cross-sectional area. Right. It's more useful, right, if you can inform me or inform or you can inform uh, your customer, for example, what is the value of P, right? Such that buckling, okay. What what is what is P max, okay? What is P max where buckling will not occur? Rather than giving them the what? Rather than giving them, okay, if you put enough load, okay, if you put enough load, let's say. If this is our centroid, rather than telling them if if you if, if you put enough load, and what is this load we don't know, okay? So if you put what so this is our deformation, right? If you put enough load, that y is a certain value, buckling our car, right? It's it's difficult to to dictate what y will be, right? Because at the end of the day, what what we want to do is to put a load p. Okay, so if is I I can tell you, okay, based on this length, this cross sectional area, you only can put five hundred newton, right? I can't I can't is is pointless is make is is not as useful as okay. If you load this structure, make sure the deflection is not more than uh, five millimeters, right? At the end user, they can't visualize, okay, how much load must I put to induce a five millimeters uh, deflection, right? So the load is a more critical value, the stress also, rather than deflection. 
So that's where we come up with this expression over here, right? Where where we have where we have our p critical is equal to n squared pi squared or l squared ei. And then the last equation we wrote out is stress critical, right? Is equal to force critical divided by area, okay? So what we can see, let, let me go further, okay? So for today. So what we can see is uh, we derive that PCR is equal to uh, pi squared uh, over, I can't remember the formula, uh, pi uh, n squared multiplied by pi squared uh, over L squared EI. Okay. So the P critical or P PCR is so called our critical load is dependent on uh, our Young's modulus. which is our E, our second moment of area, which is our I, and the length of the structure, which is equal to the L. And and what we see, your P critical, right, will increase, right, with what? Higher E and I. Yes or no? The higher your Young's modulus and your your cross section area or your second moment of area, the higher you will be your P critical. However. Your critical load will come down with what? With higher L value. The higher your length, your critical load reduces, which makes sense. Okay. And this thing, E and I, are held constant. And the one on top is L is held constant. Okay. So what I'm trying to say, if the P critical, right, is what you calculate that is dependent. So Young's modulus, you can see Young's modulus over here is dependent on your material selection, what material you use, and both the L and the second moment of area is based on the geometry that was designed. Designed or selected by the engineer, like yourself, in the near future. Okay. So you select what material? Your cross-sectional area and your length, okay, is is what you select also, and this will dictate the critical load, okay. So now you have calculated your critical load, okay. You have to later on compare. So the critical load, PCR, will be compared to the applied load. which is P, okay? So i.e. if P is less than PCR, okay? Structure will not occur. If P 
is greater than PCR structure or buckle. Okay, so P is what has been applied, okay? PCR, it is dependent, okay, on your Young's modulus, the second moment of area, and the length of the structure, okay? So, and then we come up with, we know that critical stress in buckling is equal to PCR divided by area. And PCR, as we mentioned earlier, is n squared pi squared multiplied by ei over l squared divided by a okay so i want to take i want to introduce you a new term yeah? so note okay, note that second moment of the area Okay, second moment of area uh, is equal to I, right? Is equal to A R squared. Okay, where R, okay, so I, we know that second moment, A is our cross sectional area. And R, okay, is what we call radius of gyration. And the radius of gyration is compute as R is equal to square root, right? Uh, I over A, okay, I over A. So we can also write this as R squared is equal to I over A. Okay, so now I'm going to call this our equation number one. So we are going to uh, substitute. Uh, we are going to, we are going to let uh, R squared is equal to I over A in equation number one. Okay, we're going to let it uh, equal to equation number one. So if I were to, what I'm trying to do over here is I'm trying to group this term over here, okay? Right? So this, if I'm going to rewrite the expression of your critical stress, so it's equal to n squared pi squared over L squared E, right? And then this will be uh, equal to divide by R squared. Okay. So now I'm going to rewrite the expression where we have n squared pi squared E over L over R squared. Okay. So this is our equation number two. So the next thing that I'm going to highlight that we're going to consider that one n, okay, one n of the structure. Okay, one end of the structure, uh, on, one end of the structure is, uh, give me a, oh, we're going to consider, okay, we're going to consider um, not one end, both ends. Of the structure. is pinned okay both end of the structure is pinned so now yeah yeah seeing something new okay so what this 
over here means both ends of the structure is pinned. It's known as a boundary condition.